purpose is um, to talk about the efforts that Elixir has been um, doing around software management plan and um, software management plans in general. Um, just to provide a one slide context of what Elixir is for those who are maybe are not aware, Elixir is the Pan-European Infrastructure for Life Science Data. Uh, it's coordinated by an Elixir Hub, which is located in Cambridge and um, the UK. Um, and essentially it tries to connect and to coordinate the various different services around life sciences across and um, across um, uh, Europe. And um, with several institutions taking part and exchanging both knowledge, technology and technical capacity and um, having a clear mind about fairness in, 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 in life science data. Um, one of the main efforts that is one of the efforts, not the main one, but one of the efforts that are being taken place under next year and uh, specifically on the tools platform for literature is about the software best practices. So uh, the main um, idea here of this task force is to identify what are the best practices, um, uh, the, the main ideas that we could put forward for software development so that we can improve um, the quality of the video for software in general. And this means talking about um, what are the different standards, how to measure them and, and so forth. Um, one of the main outcomes of this, of this effort um, is essentially the software management plan. And um, although there are a few software management plans out there already, um, what we try to achieve here is to define something of a unified approach that is um, low barrier entry for people who might not be um, as um, competent in software development, but they need to be aware of how um, this can be actually be supported. Uh, essentially, very similar to a data management plan, a, a software management plan is an awareness tool. Um, it essentially tries to guide people to think in advance about how the software is going to be working, what are the key elements of the software itself, who is going to be dealing in which part of that, and essentially act, uh, take the role of the guide and for everyone involved in the project itself. The design principles that we had in putting together the SMP um, were, were some basic guidelines, if you like. So the first one is that we like this to be focused on life sciences. And um, this was a design principle, but ultimately I have to admit that the, um, that the outcome could be quite generally applicable and sort of starting life sciences, but it's much more broadly uh, uh, applied. And the second point is to have a minimal set of questions, not to be too expansive, not to be too detailed. So someone would be able to fill the major part, the key elements of the, of the software itself without getting into, um, dumb into technical details that they may not be um, fully um, aware of at any particular time. Um, also, we need to be um, applicable to a wide range of projects from a simple one script thing that a PhD student might be doing in a context of a study, up until a, a full suite, a full platform of tools that are interconnected um, across multiple different modules. Um, the other part is that, um, and this is um, by design to connect those different principles. And I will circle back to those um, near the end of this, this sort of talk. Um, and ultimately, in order to achieve something that is widely accepted, we try to do this by community review. So essentially, we reached out to the various groups and different initiatives within the lecture and tried to get feedback on what actually works, what is needed, and how this would be uh, mostly of, of use eventually. Um, if we look at who is actually going to be using the SP, we essentially look at different stakeholders, if you like. So the first one is the actual person in charge of submitting the project proposals. Um, because this person, again, in the concept of the DMP, if you like, uh, needs to be aware of what is the software development, what are the best management practices that need to be taking place and, and so forth. On the other hand, you have a project manager uh, that will be monitoring this whole process and needs to be checking on the development itself. Um, questions like, is there a, sil a license for this software? Uh, is it available online and so forth are questions that come to, to that, that stakeholder. And then you have the, the software engineer, the coding researcher who is using the SMP as a checklist, if you like monitoring the process itself. As you can see, every stakeholder has a completely different set of skills, competencies, and expertise that they can fill in. Um, so the SMP by definition should not be too technical. So um, I'm going to go through the actual sections quite fast, mostly to give you an overview of what it's about. 
Um, we plan to have this as a white paper out in the next couple of weeks. So hopefully this would be more um, open for people to check. And essentially we are talking about accessibility, the foundation, testing, interoperability, versioning, reproducibility, and recognition as different sections of the SMP. Uh, looking for example in license, the questions could be if this can be accessed by third parties, if there's a license, what is the license? And um, talking about documentation, what is the, the where is the documentation, where is it located, what's the purpose of the software, and if it's located in the documentation itself, and also what are the different functions that the documentation is actually listing in there so that people can look it up. In terms of testing, what are the different types of testing available? Is there any sample data or parameters allowed um, to, to use the software and to, to test it out? Um, interoperability, what are the standards? And here we are trying to connect also with existing registries um, that are used. And for example, fair sharing was one of the options here that can be used to highlight standardized input and out formats. Versioning, version control is one of the key elements that we need to keep in this SMP. So questions could be, what are the different version systems that are available that are you using? Um, and fully aware that some of the control systems here um, can be a bit indicative of when people started to actually work with um, control uh, version control systems and what types of additional version that we keep in mind. And finally, if you look at reproducibility and, and recognition, um, how can you ensure that um, the environment of the software is captured effectively? And if you can provide input out examples so, so that the actual function, the function of your software can be reproduced, how can you get um, uh, reports on, on bugs, on usability problems back from the community? And ultimately, how to ensure that the community can um, recognize um, the role of the project of the software to, 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 to the rest of the world. So persistent identifiers, citation information, and a connection to registries. So these are the particular sections in the SMP. And as you can hopefully realize from the, this very brief overview, they try to capture very high level but critical components of the of the software um, cycle. Um, this is sort of the SMP, and I want to highlight that we are looking at the um, life cycle from the design up until, if you like, the first release or a major release of software. So it's not looking at the sustainability part of it, which I know it sounds a bit um, um, compromising, especially in the context of this particular workshop. And however, the idea is to move beyond these, um, these um, questions and start to connect to different measurements that can be assessing um, um, the, 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 the indicators of, of the software itself. And here is where we are trying to connect with the metrics around fairness, if you like. Um, this is an effort that's been done primarily by Open Events and the Software Observatory um, led by BSC, the Barcelona Supercomputing Center, again with Elixir. And in this context, you can see different principles of fairness and how they can be connected to um, different outcomes that can be retrieved by um, metadata of, of, the, uh, of the software. And the key connection between the SMP and, and this one is that, as you can imagine from the questions and from the uh, principles, there is a quite clear connection between those two. So if we can read and identify the metrics that connect to fair, fair principles, we can essentially connect this to the SMP and therefore can have indicators associated to that. In that sense, the open events provide some technical monitoring of, of bioinformatics tools and on tools in general. And this can be done also by uh, through benchmarking, benchmarking of individual tools. This is the open event or by whole population of tools, which is the tools observatory. And um, here's essentially the way that those two things are being connected. Um, with the quality assessment being done by using the software management plan, for example, and community the discussion across different communities that actually do that at the infrastructure level, technical, and um, define what other different um, tools that are, can be used for that. Um, the last slide, and I want to close with that, being fully aware of the time, um, is that um, this is essentially our first um, major outcome. Um, the road has been longish. We started working on that uh, in November 2019. And right now we are close to a first version of that. So we are a few, a few months behind of our original roadmap. However, the idea is that by um, the next couple of years, we will be connecting this SMP to the automated metrics of the open events and the software observatory. So ultimately we can have a semi-automated interface for both the creation and data capturing of SMPs of software management plans available to the wider community. 
And with that, I'd like to thank you. And any questions, I'm more than welcome to address.